Hey guys, today we're doing another microscope video. I recorded this uh, earlier this year, I think just a little while after I got my ADSM 302 microscope. Um, previously I used it just to look around my Raspberry Pi, but the real reason I got it was for soldering. And so this is more of a, a test of it. So as you can see here, I have a circuit board. Uh, one end is a VGA connector. The other end is a HDMI connector. It's just something cheap from eBay. Um, as you can see, we're at the VGA end and I'm poking the uh, pins that are soldered with my tweezers. Um, there's not that much latency when using this. Um, I have like, I have shaky hands, so um, the best thing I've found is just kind of to brace myself against the board. Um, so let's look at it from the side here to see what's happened. Um, yeah, so this thing wiggles. Um, that's not good. You don't want something, you don't want a connector wiggling um, when it's soldered to something. And if we look at it, we can see that one of the pins has come up at the end. And that's part of the response for it wiggling. The other part, I guess, is because they didn't design any strain relief in this. Um, also, there's like not that much solder on that pin. It's a little weird. Um, the pin next to it too seems a little bit sus. I'm just bending it back into place here. Um, and in a second, we're going to Put some nice solder on it, but first we're going to put some flux. I don't have a good flux applicator, so I'm just using some oversized tweezers here. Um, I saw one video where someone used a toothpick, and ever since then I've been like, i got to use a toothpick for this, but uh, I haven't. So, uh, I have cut out some boring bits from this of just waiting, so... Otherwise you'd be watching a 40 minute video. Let's tin the iron. Um, I'm using a chisel tip on my pine saw. Um, that did not solder very well just now. Let's try heating up both the pad and the pin like a proper person does. You can see all these fumes coming off from my flux. Um, don't worry, I have a fume extractor. It's, it's fine. I'm not just breathing in fumes. Um, but if anything, having a microscope where I don't have to have my face above it, it, it helps with the fumes just a little bit. Um, as you can see, I'm not having any trouble soldering. Um, I'm, I think these joints would be fairly okay to do if I had like just a magnifying glass. Um, but like with the microscope, I can just have like a better view. The main reason I didn't go, like I bought an uh, LCD microscope that just has a screen on it. And the main reason for that is so I didn't have to bend my neck over what I was working at. Um, that just hurts my neck. It's not good ergonomics. I don't get it. Um, and the trade-off, I guess, is lack of depth perception. So now that we've soldered that, let's have a look from the side on. Still a bit of wiggle. Um, it doesn't look like it's really soldered that well. Like, it's not moving, but... Um, the pad doesn't look like it's really connected to the, to the pin. Um, so it could be that there's solder underneath. Yeah. So if we look from this angle we can see that the, the pin is like, it is up, it is lifted, but it is still soldered. And I guess that's a problem with the lack of depth perception with this. I would have been able to see that so much easier if I had like a binocular microscope. Um, but you know, I can just turn the board and hopefully see better. So in this case, we're going to use some tweezers to push it down while soldering. 
Um, doing this does risk a bit of a cold joint, but if you're like me, you're probably using solder with a uh, melting point rather than melting range. So it's a bit harder to get cold joints. Um, this tip is too big as evidented by it soldering the thing next to it, but that's okay. Um, so it looks like that worked well. Yep, that's kind of flush with the board and so is the pin next to it. Um, yep, looks good. Still wiggles. That's not good. I imagine VGA connectors are supposed to have some kind of strain relief. Let's look at the HDMI section and we can see a bit more of the troubles with this board. Um, if we look down from the side, we can see there's a lot of pins connected, but the shields at the side aren't properly connected and there is some solder on them, but their shape does not kind of make them want to connect. They're kind of at an angle and you can't like bend them. So the HDMI shield not being connected is probably not a good thing. Um, I'm not sure electrically, but definitely physically. Solder is not supposed to provide physical, uh, what's the word? Physical strength. I'll just say that. Uh, but it's still good to just have it there if it provides any strength. Um, these pads might be connected to ground. I think this is a big ground plane. It might not be. It's unsure to me. I didn't really check too much. Um, so we're putting some solder on it and then we're just going to flood it with solder. Uh, one mistake I made here is, as you can see, it's not um, heating up. And that's because my soldering iron wasn't on. <laughs> um, if you want to solder, you should probably put your iron on. So, uh, I have a fast heating iron, so we're back in a second here. Um, and should be ready to solder. Let's see. Let's see how long it takes. Quite a bit longer than I remember, actually. So, yep, melts the solder. Um, taking a little while to heat up that uh, pad. It probably should have used more heat. Um, that's my bad. But as you can see, it is. it did create a joint there. Um, it's probably a bit more solder than you would probably want for this kind of joint. Um, but it, the, the connector is like not ideal for soldering as evidenced by the fact that it didn't solder properly. Um, solder that end. Probably a bit too long there. That's okay. Uh, let's flip it over and do... Oh, I've already done all the joints. No, okay, yeah. So this side, we have to do this one as well. So same strategy. I didn't put any flux down this time. So um, as you can see, I'm having a bit of difficulty and you can see the old solder is taking a little bit longer to melt and kind of floating around. Definitely not a good idea. Don't skip on the flux. Um, the only reason I did it was, I don't know. I don't know why. I guess I was lazy. Don't be lazy. Uh, but yeah, it does, it eventually heats up and gets here correctly. And I uh, managed to, I think, heat up one of the joints there and leave a bit of a solder gunky thing. That's fine, we'll fix that in a little bit. Let's inspect the joints. I mean, are they the best joints? No. Uh, but they are better joints than before. It looks like the wiggle is actually gone. Um, as usual, 
I've forgotten to turn my screensaver off, so I have to type my password in. Um, don't be like that. Don't be a person that forgets to turn their screensaver off or wiggle their mouse. Um, if anything, I should probably just remove my screensaver auto turn on because I always lock my screen on purpose. Um, but since I'm using like Linux, I don't know, it just seems like it's, it would take a few hours to figure out how to fix this and it doesn't inconvenience me enough. I mean, I spent like a year with my graphics card being noisy until I figured out it's just like a few commands to fix that. Um, I feel like I'd probably, I feel like I'd be much better dealing with Linux problems if, uh, if, I feel like a distribution of Arch that solves these problems for me would be better, but I haven't found one. Okay, so at this point, we're just kind of poking the pins to see if they're moving after I soldered that. I think I was talking over it after we soldered that. No, we didn't solder it yet. That's good. Um, so we just saw two at the end moved. That's not good. They're both connected too. Um, the other VGA pin that was moving, I think it was not connected, but these two like are clearly signal lines. So um, I definitely want these to be connected. Maybe that's why it wasn't working. I don't know. I actually, uh, I didn't, I, I stopped using this thing because I was afraid that if I, you know, wiggled it any more in use, um, I'd rip pads off or something. So I was like, okay, I'll just have to do maintenance on this anyway, even if it's still working, if I jiggle it. Um, I would not recommend getting this off eBay unless, I don't know, I take apart all my stuff I buy from eBay just to check that like it's not going to explode or break. Um, that can bring out some good content, but you know, it's a, it's a risk buying stuff from eBay. It's always cheap and, um, you know, you, you get risks where you just, you can't really, well, you can send stuff back, but like, you know, if you send stuff back, what are you going to do then? You still, you still need the thing you bought. Anyway, so we're holding down the pins while we solder these joints. Um, seems to be working fairly well. Let's do the other pin here. Yep, and because my tip is too big and I'm not positioning it properly, I'm hitting both, both pins at once, which isn't ideal, but uh, again, it seems fine. I mean, it might not be fine, but you know, I can fix it later. We do have this clock on the board here. Let me show you. Um, this is probably the clock for the microcontroller or conversion chip. Um, and it wiggles a bit. Not sure if that's good. Uh, looking at the solder joint spread at the back, um, they don't look, they look kind of like cows. They, they're spotted, it's a little bit weird. Um, but let's just reflow them anyway. I mean, why not? While we're here, we might as well. Uh, put a t bunch of flux on it, why not? There's the USB port for power there. This thing gets power over USB and then runs VGA and HDMI. Kind of weirds me out that like HDMI doesn't have a power bus on it. That seems like something you would want on really any digital connector. Yep, so that's good. That's all done. I'm looking around the rest of the board just to see if there's anything we should maybe solder or fix. Um, doesn't look like it. This audio jack looks fine. Um, 
so it might just be time to clean everything. Yeah, so let's spray it. And I've, I've cut up this cleaning section so you don't have to watch it all. It's not that interesting. Um, so we, we brush it and then we, we swab it. Looks a little bit better. Um, and then we're going to use our tweezers to just remove some grime. Um, I'm not sure why there's so much grime here. This was here when I opened it. This is not my doing. Um, could be that this is just some kind of no clean flux, but it's only here in the board. So I'm not sure. Um, I use like thick gross rosin flux, which isn't no clean. I don't think here's a solder splash. I think, yeah, this is my doing definitely. Um, well, at least I'm pretty sure there's some gross stickiness there. Let's just clean it up. Get that swab. I uh, think I'll be brushing it next. No, I must have cut that out. Uh, this is the HDMI side. As you can see, you can see my, my flux. Um, if you get flux from a syringe, it's probably going to be a lot better than this. Um, but I bought soldering flux, rosin flux when I first started soldering and you know, I still have it. It's still a tub, so I might as well use it, right? It doesn't seem to be causing that many issues. It just really is a bit of a uh, trouble to clean up. And once again, we're going to clean out between these pins. It is kind of interesting that the pins that I soldered don't really have that, that gunk that some of their pins do. Um, but yeah, that, that is all clean now. It looks good. Looks professional. Looking around the board. Did we clean the clock part? It still wiggles, so not great, but it was worth a shot to try and fix that. Let's clean the other side of the HDMI connector. Cleaning is good. I did a stream where I made my own DIY Xbox controller and uh, after nine hours of constantly trying, not Xbox controller, Xbox to HDMI thing. And after like nine hours of streaming, I finally caught it working and I was like, yes. And uh, I forgot to clean the flux off and all that junk before uh, hot gluing it into the case. So, um, and I realized it immediately after I did it because my friend Kaz was like, you got to clean that. And I'm like, oh no, I forgot to clean it. But that's okay. It wasn't really a good quality connector and uh, I don't actually use it. So it was more of just a fun project. You know, why spend dozens of dollars when you can spend half a dozen dollars, but then nine hours of your time? Um, so at this point, you can see I'm trying to pick these cotton cotton swabs, the little um, fibers out from it. Uh, this is a bit tricky to do without depth perception, but yeah, you can do it. It's just a little bit more inconvenient. Um, let's just check the joints here. Um, the wiggle seems to be a lot less. Um, it's actually pretty good. I'm not sure why that is. I don't think cleaning things makes it wiggle less. It's worth noting for the HDMI section, the only wiggle was on the shield, I think. I'm not sure. So what are we doing next? Hot glue, obviously. Um, I decided to hot glue it just for a bit more. Um, relief and uh, at first I used too much hot glue and I want to kind of make it clear that hot gluing from top down is probably not the best angle to do this from um, because you, you you can't see much I, I used a little bit less hot glue there on that side of the connector it, it did not work very well um, 
And plus with hot glue, you have to remove all the strings. I don't know if there's a way to, you know, hot glue without strings, but I don't know. Let's just continue. Um, so let's hot glue this corner here. Um, yep. I get the shakes from hot gluing because you have to require it. You have to do a lot of pressure when you pull the trigger of the hot glue thing. Uh, I'm not sure why they make it that way. Um, foot pedals would be a good design for this kind of thing. Well, really anything that doesn't require a large amount of, I guess it's because you're pushing through the glue. It doesn't have like any mechanical thing. You're the one that's feeding the glue through it. Um, as, as a fun story, the hot glue thing I have here didn't come with instructions. Well, it did, but it didn't mention one key thing. It didn't mention that you have to have a second like stick of hot glue in it in order to be able to push the first one through. And so when I first got it, this thing just wasn't working because like I put a stick of hot glue in um, and then like I, I fed it through and then it just wouldn't push out. And that's specifically because it didn't have a second stick in it pushing the first one through. So the pushing mechanism was like pushing a second stick at the back of it through and using that to push out the first. So without that, the first one would just sit there and that wasn't great. It led to me making a bad, a bad decision and needing to get a board fixed by someone professional. Um, shout out to them for doing that, by the way. Um, I don't know if they want to be mentioned, but um, it was very, very nice of them. Um, I think, yeah, they quoted $200 and it was like a ripped pad and stuff and uh, it, it definitely took them way more time than that. Um, and at the end they were like, oh, I don't, I don't even want payment, um, because I've got a new job and I'm moving away from this business. And I was like, no, I, I, I want to pay you. I'll just, I'll, I'll pay you what you quoted me. Um, I, I felt pretty bad. Um, so that's, that's one reason I'm trying to get good at stuff so I don't make mistakes. Um, but I am a, I am an expert at making mistakes. So overall though, you can see here, despite the lack of depth perception, I am able to get these, these strings using my tweezers. Um, I have been able to solder everything. I have been able to hot glue things. I've seen some, one thing I was concerned about when getting an LCD microscope is the latency on it. Um, like you don't want too much. You don't want a detectable amount of lag when you're, yeah, if we look at from the side here, you can see some of the hot glue didn't even bond to the board properly. Um, but wiggling it, it's a lot stronger now. So, you know, this is not the best fix, but it's better. I think. I've actually run out of video here and I'm recording this extra part in post. As I was saying though, um, the latency on, uh, on this pretty good. Um, it doesn't feel like you're looking through something that's digitally processing a signal. So overall, I'd say pretty good. I would recommend this microscope because it's cheap and it works. That's all. Bye.